the Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. This is the Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. Yeah, not the debate about uh, Throwdown Thursday. It doesn't go until six or seven twenty this morning. Yeah. Well, I'm writing my thoughts down right yeah, now. You were adamant. You you didn't even. So we'll go with that matchup because I like both characters too. By the way, for the record. Yeah. Okay. I think they'll. I think that'll be an interesting one. Uh, so 7.20 this morning, we pick a couple. Sometimes it's fictional characters from movies. Last week, we had uh, Wild Turkey versus a, a goose. Mm-hmm. So it can be pretty much, it can be animated characters. It's something different. Every Thursday, Throwdown Thursday, we'll do it at 7.20 this morning. It's Philly Joe and Kirby. The time now is 6.12 on a Thursday, getting closer to that long weekend. If we're going to talk programming notes, I'll mention Big uh, Dumb Wheel coming up at uh, in the 9 o'clock hour, just after 9.10. It'll be your cue to call. Had a $300 winner yesterday. We can't get over that $300 no. hump without giving I, it I away. I really want to hit four, but mm. it's, yeah, it seems like three is where we tap. I think... Next time, I'm going to ask Iron Mike if he can uh, budget something for an actuary to break down the numbers here for us because we've had $300 a few times and bingo every time. Mm. That's got to be like... Uh, statistically... Yeah, you got to like, look at the numbers. So you want some data? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to cr- see... You want to crunch those numbers, well, Joe? No, I want an actuary to do it. That's what they get paid for. Don't give the numbers. man... Don't I don't give even the boss. know what an actuary is. Don't... Don't give the boss any ideas, okay? He likes he likes his meetings. We got it's a double meeting no, day no. today. I didn't say we were going to the meeting. Just send us an email with the results. <laughs> <laughs> also, quickly, can you explain an actuary? Yeah, what is Kirby? it? Yeah, there are numbers people, Kirby. Like, they can figure out, uh, you know, uh, statistically how long you should live for mm. with the wow. lifestyle you live. Very I, smart people. Do you meet? You know these people? Well, yeah, you, we can find you one if you need one. <laughs> don't. <laughs> she don't work cheap. It. Hey. She's got her therapist. That's all she needs. She doesn't need an actuary. Don't you talk to your nail lady, your hair lady, and your uh, Uh, tanning lady, and now you got your tattoo guy? Yeah. Do you really need an actuary in your life? <laughs> I don't think your I have room Your life's expensive enough. Uh, she that pays them all true. cash, okay? She let, made that <laughs> oh, abundantly yeah. clear yesterday. Actuaries, I don't know yeah. if they work for cash or not, or if they <laughs> just prefer payment. <laughs> Uh, pissed off? Well, then get the f*** off Twitter and call the bone phone. Don't make me look up from my phone. 780 Bone. Brought to you by Auto Gallery of Winnipeg. Yeah, so it's uh, construction season. I feel like uh, people need to be reminded that uh, if you can't get the f*** out of an intersection, don't get the f*** in an intersection. Like, it's that f- simple. You have enough room for your vehicle on the other side of the intersection or the turn, or you don't. And if you don't have enough room, don't even f-ing enter. <laughs> wow. That we got was, the horn. That was not a meet meet reminder horn. That yeah. was an aggressive honk right yeah. there. Yeah, definitely. But he's right. <laughs> he's right when the, we, the, don't enter if it if you can't get through it. Because then you're just stuck and you're holding up traffic coming uh-huh. from the other way. Sure. Bad news. I, I really like the other one, too, when you, you're in the turn light uh, lane mm. and uh, you're waiting and waiting and waiting, but the turn light's already gone, so it's just green, and you wait at the line. You don't even move into the intersection. Oh, you yeah. don't pull out. <laughs> yeah, that one, oh, like, that drives me nuts. Because, yeah. <laughs> like, like, a car, like, cars could go. Uh, well, yeah, it's okay. You can be sitting in the intersection till uh, yeah, you know. Don't worry, we're not in a rush. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, th- now this topic was discussed, I believe we kind of came to some resolution, but just because we've already talked about it, I-, I still believe that if you call the bone phone, we should still play your call. So here we go. Hey, I imagine this gets brought up once in a while, but like, why the hell have we not approved overnight construction for roads and infrastructure? Like, what- what's the story behind that? Is-, is that like an ordinance, a bylaw, a provincial thing? Is that, like, a labor shortage? Like, it's not like we're going to work you 24 hours. You could split it up into shift work, 12 and 12, 8, 8, and 8, or whatever the heck it is. But, uh, yeah, what in the f***? Because how the hell do you get around town these days? I think everything is pretty much chewed up someplace or the other. Anyways, wish, uh, wish we did some smart things over here, but we're just broke. Oh, well. So that'll get that'll get some passionate reaction from uh Workers in the industry are like, what do you want us to work overnight? Like, they don't love the idea. If that, that was the commentary we got anyway. Yeah, one of the uh, comments was uh, basically not having enough employees 
to make that happen, where mm-hmm. it would become a shift work, and there's not enough people that want to do that work. Bang. Yeah, so. that's what it seemed anyway. Okay, Motorhead guy, fired up here. Hey, Billy, Joe, and Kirby, it's Motorhead guy. So I was uh, driving home from work today, and they got that f***ing detour from uh, number one onto number two <laughs> on Highway 13, and I was, like, in a mile-long, like, traffic jam just trying to get across the highway and eventually just said this i'm going down some dirt road where i had to drive through some mud and this and that but i skipped the whole line but anyways but at the ma's diner they got dot officers sitting there just waiting to pick people off and i'm just thinking to myself like man like why the why does he just get to sit there and just wait like oh that guy, the third car in the lineup doesn't look that bad, but maybe we'll wait until he turns and then we'll pull him over after he's been waiting that long just to get through here because they can't go through the scale at Henley. Anyways, I also wanted to say uh, sorry, Tow Truck Cowboy, for not being here, but when you parked your camper here, it's a very nice camper. So anyways, <laughs> hope you all have a great day. Peace. There's a lot going on there. I, I, I do like the friendship between the I, two of too. them. How like, great is that? Yeah, I didn't know that. Uh, I would love to mo- know more about the camper situation. Mm-hmm. That's that's a neighborly thing to do. Bone phone community, right yeah, there. Yeah, it, it is. It's. Just, yep. I think they were friends before the bone phone. But sounds s- like still it. Yep. Kinda, that's pretty cool. Yep. Okay, the hooligan. Been a uh, been a few uh, been a oh. maybe, maybe a week since we last heard from him. Well, my son, who's 18, as of May. Graduated high school, had his grad yesterday. Which I'm very proud, I'm very happy. It's over with. The stress is over for me. Like, why are you late? Why are you not in class? Like, it's over, finally. <laughs> very happy, very proud of him. But yet, on the other hand, I'm very pissed off at him. Why? <laughs> surprise, surprise. Because when I phone him, and he answers the phone, and I hear it click, I go, You drive? He goes, Yeah. I said, Why are you answering your phone? Or I could drive with one hand and hold my phone with the other. That's not the point, son. I said, you're on probation. You talk to him, and you talk to your kids, and you tell them right from wrong, and they still think they can do whatever they want. You know, you get caught, you're on probation, you lose your license, you have five demerits. How are you going to get to uh, Red River when you take electrician's course in the fall? How are you going to get to work? Don't count on me. Like, honestly, a simple thing like that. Don't answer your phone. Oh, I can't imagine having a hooligan I love it. dad. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody else in my world was posting pictures of their grads. Only one got a life lesson <laughs> from his father. <laughs> hooligan, I missed you the last oh, week. Me too. That made my whole year of graduation right there. This yes. is the Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. You guys ever stub your uh, one of your uh, your foot or your toe on uh, something related to your bed, like uh, oh side of the bed or bang your knee? The, the, that has to be the most underrated common injury, I would think. It's that like metal part, like that holds the uh, the it's frame, the bed frame. Yeah, mm. yeah, yep. Or the leg. Oh there, my yeah. god! Leg, some form of a leg. I hit my so oh. I, last night. And it's it's dark because the kids are already in bed. I'm trying to get my clothes ready for this morning, rummaging around the room. My wife's in bed already, so I'm trying to be quiet. And I stubbed my pinky and the second toe from the pinky, uh, the mm. first toe from the pinky. I stubbed them, and that's not usually it's the big toe, but I stubbed them so bad. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I might have broke one of them. They haven't changed colors, but it. Like, I'm limping around the office today, and it takes a lot for Yowch. me to live. Oh, and and I don't think there's much you can do. No. no. As far as uh, healing, Toes. you just let it heal. There's nothing you could. I've literally broke a toe before. I can't get And a I've cast. gone, and they're like, there's nothing you can do. Like, Here. you just got to let it heal. Let me sign your cast on your pinky toe. I can't even get Joe written on it. You can put your initial. I was thinking of going to the ER today. Uh, I stubbed my toe. I think it's broken. You know what? The people uh, behind you in line will really appreciate the uh, 
The extra time yeah. you're spending in ER. It's an 18-hour wait. What are you here for? I stub my well, pinky I'm, toe on the bed. Let the triage nurse get up from uh, their desk and walk to the people and go, oh, wait till you see this one. Pinky toe. <laughs> Imagine the look on her face. That's why you came today to the hospital, because you stubbed your toe on the side oh, of your bed. Oh, boy. But I don't know. It seems to me these bed manufacturers, bed frame manufacturers, like, I don't know. There's not... <laughs> why haven't we figured out yes. a better, like, I know there are different frames. Because you can get the frames that are enclosed boxes, like yeah. they they like you know kind of like a hotel bed, so nothing goes underneath the bed. Mm. That's even worse. It's just a wood frame around. <laughs> now you got more <laughs> more stuff potential. <laughs> Philly Joe Kirby. Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. The Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. Philly Joe and Kirby's. Okay, this one should uh, evoke some uh, opinions and passion. couple of TV characters from uh, wildly successful TV shows. You got Jax from Sons of Anarchy. Tons of fans of that show. Oh, yeah. Back in the day. Mm -hmm. Good show. Jax, who basically vice president, then president of Sons of Anarchy, up against Rip from the show Yellowstone. Rip, the ranch hand, who is also... Kevin Costner's number one. Would you call him his number one um, hand? Hand, but uh, he's also his uh, enforcer-ish, right? I takes, would say so. Takes he's, he's his intimidator. Yeah. Never want to get in that pickup and go for a ride. That's, I'll tell you. That's right, definitely. So, so a couple of bad dudes, a couple of intimidating guys, guys you wouldn't want, you know, to uh, be up against. This is an interesting matchup, Phil. Kirby, I'm going to let you start. Uh, you know, I was a huge Sons of Anarchy fan um, back in the day. And it was weird because I'm not even really that into motorcycles, but uh, I just loved the show. Like, I was super passionate about it. Well, you don't have to be into motorcycles to, like, a show about a biker gang, though. No, like, no, for yeah. sure. But it was just kind of like not really the typical show that I would go to. And yeah. I got hooked. And uh, I feel like Jax is such a badass. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, he... The ladies love him. He mm -hmm. survived, like, numerous confrontations mm -hmm. that he had throughout the entire show. Uh, a lot of violence that he lived through. Rip, Rip has not that much violence on his record, as, but I'm not a Yellowstone fan. Not so. quite the resume, would you say, Rip? Uh, you shouldn't say that. If you I haven't shouldn't? seen it, no. Okay, very good. Does well, Rip you can't a... tell us he hasn't had as much violence and then tell us you haven't seen the show. Well, I don't know. I'm just guessing. The guy's <laughs> well, a cowboy. He? He's a little bit, like, yeah. less it's badass. It's not my turn to vote yet. You, you've seen them both. <laughs> Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, I watch both shows. So, uh, I mean, obviously, uh, they're both sex symbols as far as uh, ladies. Uh, mm. They Both pictures of these guys have gone viral. But I look at it this way. Jax, great character, had a lot of backing every time. That's just the way bike gangs work. So if you're telling me on toughness, I'm going to go with Rip. Because Rip led the enforcement. Mm. He was the guy... That if he took you behind the woodshed, there was no coming back. Yeah. I don't know if I felt that way about Jax, Jax. on his own, one-on-one, -on -one, mm. is the way I'm looking at mm. this matchup. Yeah. So I'm putting my money on Rip just because of the way... The guy got branded, okay, as a youth. <laughs> okay, branded, that, that, that's Kirby. That's pretty intense. But I would have to say, in my eyes, You're going estimation, Rip. Rip would be the tougher of the two. I'm going to go with, uh, I'll go with Jax. I just think more ruthless world he comes from. Yeah. yeah. And when push, I can see both sides. Like, we're going to get both sides. But when push comes to shove, I just feel like uh, Jax, like Kirby kind of said, he's he the world he lives in is a more violent world than, uh, and I've only seen, like, I'm getting into Yellowstone yes. now, so I'm like halfway through season one. So it could get, you know, a lot more violent. But as, I, as I've seen it so far, I would definitely go Jax. Yeah. Okay. Let us know what you think. Thursday Throwdown is the post going up at the 92.1 City Facebook page, Kirby. It is. Okay. Yep. Weigh in text line as well. This, this is the Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. PJK Extra. You know, we, uh, we like doing the what's what. What's what. Uh, something we used to do on the show. Entertainment news. I would say entertainment news most of the time. We get some celebrity birthdays in there. 
movies. It was a great way to talk uh, entertainment. So it's a it, it's PJK Extra is nice. Nice to bring it up again. What do you got for today? For me today, entertainment? Uh, well, I'll go with this. Um, on this day in 2021, and I'm bringing this up because uh, we uh, Joe and I both watched recently, actually this past weekend, Land of Saints and Sinners with Liam Neeson. And uh, it, it was all right. Joe liked it a little more than I did, but it, it is what it is. Liam, at this point in his career, you're not getting anything earth-shattering out of him. And I think that got him an extra point and a half in my books. Right. Just being Liam Neeson. <laughs> well, I've seen worse movies. Put it yes. that way. Uh, the Ice Road was released on this day in 2021. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Is this not the one that was made in Manitoba? Yeah. It's the one that I watched for all of 12 minutes <laughs> and had to shut it off. And I've never done that with a Liam movie. I have to revisit it because Kirby liked it. I really <laughs> did. I thought it was really good. Maybe it was because I knew it was filmed here. And mm. there's just that, like, you know, feeling of proudness that our province was featured in that movie. I'll tell you what. Sidebar on that story. I was supposed to have the opportunity to meet Liam Neeson, if yeah. you can believe this, at, uh, at my restaurant through a casting person. But if you remember, things got shut down because of COVID. Oh, that's right. And uh, his, stuff, his stuff was pretty much finished. So he never came back to well, Winnipeg. Hey, the guy makes a movie. Maybe about that's it. why. Subliminally in the back of my head or uh, subconsciously. Yeah. Uh, maybe I can't watch the end of that movie. He and he makes a new movie every three weeks, so you maybe should be okay. At some point, I'm sure he'll make another movie here in Manitoba, and he'll come into your restaurant. There's not many moving vehicles or uh, such that he has left to do. Has he done well, a train? Yeah. Oh. What about Ice Road Two? You just never know. Did it? Did they leave it open for a sequel? I, I left it in 12 <laughs> minutes. Remember? Kirby, it's one of your favorite movies ever. Don't, they don't ruin it? the ending. <laughs> what about a snowmobile? That could be shot sure, here. Liam, Liam, Liam on a snowmobile? Maybe. Yeah, never say never. Could be. Could be. Hmm. Um, I want to talk about Ozzy Osbourne for a second and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame because nobody figured that Ozzy's going to be there in October to perform, but... His wife slash manager, Sharon, has come out and said that Ozzy is building up his stamina, strength, and balance at mm. the age of 75, still dealing with a number of health issues. But his goal and focus is to be able to become a solo artist at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in October. And that would be cool. I always like uh, watching the performances at the Rock and Roll Hall mm. of Fame. But Ozzy, I don't know. I don't know what that would uh, entail, but I'd rather hear he perform than not. Mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, I don't, I don't want to see it at this point. I think it, at the end, even on the Black Sabbath tours, and when I, got a ch I saw both of those, and I, I, don't get me wrong, I love that he still was doing pretty good at that point, but you could see it lost a step, and now with some of his... Well, that's I, I not just, a step. He shuffles now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I personally, I think Ozzy... You know the Prince of Darkness, man, an absolute, an absolute legend, like uh, someone, like pioneer of metal, like blah blah blah. His resume speaks for itself. I think he should shut down performing. Let other no, people. No, but I'm just saying for that one night. Yeah, just one night. I don't yeah. need a tour. Mm -hmm. I would just. Love I know to it see means a lot it. to him because he's come out and said many times that like he he doesn't want to be done. Yeah. So. Well, nobody ever does. But no. I'm just yeah. saying I would be I'm fully understand. Yeah, I'd be a little, I'd be a little tense for him. One performance, getting that award. Mm. If I had to ask you guys what you think the worst day of the week is to break up with somebody, what would you guess? A Friday. Mm, I don't know. Breaking up. Going so, into the weekend. There's no day. There's no like breakup where you go, well, thankfully it was a Wednesday. So it wasn't. So, <laughs> yes. yeah, breaking up is never fun regardless of the day of the week. Right. That is very valid. They say that the best day, though, if you're going to end things with somebody is Thursday because then you got a three day weekend ahead of yourself. You got two nights of fun before you got to go back to work. And uh, see, I'd see it the other way. I'd see it as a ruining of the mm, weekend yeah. coming up because it's probably still going to have some. There's still an aftermath yeah. to the breakup. I'd well, rather do it on a Tuesday then. Yeah, don't ruin your weekend. By the time the weekend comes around, yeah. you're ready to get out again. Yeah. Get on the prowl. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, that's BJK extra. Philly Joe Kirby. Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. The Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. There's something interesting I want to throw throw by you guys because the younger generation, Gen Z, okay, that's the ages 16 to 26. 
they think being five to ten minutes late is on time. Like, that is the consensus <laughs> among young people. <laughs> so what's, what's late? Like a half an hour? Is that late? <laughs> well, I would assume anything over five, ten minutes. Uh-huh. Like, if maybe, yeah, 15 minutes, that's late. 20 right. minutes, late. Mm. Whereas, like, when I grew up, and I'm sure you guys can relate, like, my parents were just like, you got to be early to everything. Being late is the worst thing you can do. Sure. Yeah, I, uh, Be on time. And so I would be the person showing up, like, a half an hour early. Mm-hmm. Uh, not anymore, though, right? <laughs> yeah, I just. Yeah, I'm when sorry. did that end? I'm sorry, Kirby. I, 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 we love you, but I just. I'm, I, I had to pause there for a second myself. We both did. We both did. Like, I thought the first thing that entered my head is I go 30 minutes early. I said I've never seen that. Uh, and then Phil hit it home you, with the. But, but listen, you don't go out with me all the time. You only okay. work with me. Let's back up. Let's back up. Okay, so every remember, time we do go out with you, though, yeah. So I'm late. let's just go over some of the events. And I, oh, you brought it up. No, God. no. I did bring okay. this up. Let yep. me start by saying this. I'll throw you some flowers. When you're on location for the station, when you got to work oh, yeah, on yeah, a yeah. Saturday or something, mm. you're there early. You're now ne- you you you're there. You're set up. You're doing. So that if it's a work related event, you're on the clock. You are there. Okay. So I'm going to give you that. If one. I'm getting paid to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes a little bit of sense. That's okay. That's but okay. Just going to go through some of the events. So there was oh, okay. uh, like a check. We had a check presentation. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> it was in the last few months. Joe and I mm-hmm. were there. The boss, Iron Mike, was there. And then everybody was there. The room was packed. Can't couldn't do the picture <laughs> for what about thirty minutes late on the picture because no, because, because the check the check almost became outdated <laughs> by the time Kirby got there. Uh, <laughs> here's the oh funny thing: God. if you're talking Gen Z, okay, and I'll say Z because we're in Canada. But, yeah, okay. But at the end of the day, I think you see that a lot more with kind of work related lateness mm. than you do if mm. it's. You're not walking into a movie 10 minutes late. You shouldn't be anyway, that kind of thing. But work, I could see it. I could see if you start at 9, you're walking in, punching the clock if you have to at 9.05, 9.10. But mm-hmm. I will tell you this. I don't care how old you are. <laughs> that drives the rest of the staff crazy. It does, yeah. yeah. Well, and then there was the Gold Eye staff event. That What happened there? There was uh, traffic? You know, well, I couldn't find, yeah. My traffic. hair appointment ran late, and yeah. then I couldn't mm-hmm. find parking. And, then and the poor man working at We Clay heard the story once already. Yeah. Okay, okay, here we go with a review. And then, <laughs> and, and the then, best part was you lived the closest to the ballpark out of all three of us. Oh, yeah, we had to go on the field. You could have walked to the ballpark. We, but did I make it? We had to go on yes. the field to throw the first pitch, and we were, like, holding. They had to hold the game 3,500 people sitting there in the stands going, well, there's not a cloud in the sky. It can't be a rain delay. No, no, it's a Kirby delay. But I made it, and you that's did. the point. Hey. I'll throw you some flowers. You made a hell of a pitch to home plate, too, for the ceremonial pitch. You did a great job. I always come through. I'm just a little late to the game. And then Joe has to call you, what, two, three days a week at 530? (laughs) Just to make sure you're alive and safe. (laughs) I do do that. But that speech, I don't know what's with kids today. I learned to get there early. I regret it, okay? (laughs) This is the Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. So this is, uh, if I got this correct, Joe, this is your buddy who sent you this, and it's two owls possibly fornicating. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, I wasn't. I didn't want to ruin the surprise for Kirby because I was golfing yesterday with my buddies, and uh, one of them uh, has a place up. Uh, his camper is set up in uh, Beresford Lake. Mm. He's one of those fishing guys, loves it, loves nature and everything else, and he unplugs uh, like everything. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, they hear some ruffling going on and a couple of sounds and he goes hey i know i know you guys love uh, love nature on the show especially, i said well especially kirby, kirby. she loves animals he yeah. goes well you might love this he goes okay have no. you ever heard owls and i said who <laughs> and i said no no i haven't and he says well wait we got the audio. How now, do we know that they're... Well, I'll let you. you oh, you got to figure this out. You're the animal lover. I don't on the even program. know how they... I first will have to Google. You how, tell us. <laughs> I will say, all I can hear is the fire. He's, he's obviously sitting by the fire, and you can hear the oh, crackling yeah. of the fire. Yeah. And man, I love that sound. Going camping next It's a very week. romantic setting, apparently, <laughs> for the owls. <laughs> so here we go. Is this owls? Oh, wow. Have an adder. 
<laughs> Watch, listen. That's what, uh, oh my god, it's the hoot, 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 for me. That took all of 20 seconds. <laughs> That's a good night for me, right? That's there. Pretty good. Man, <laughs> that owl's got endurance. <laughs> Philly Joe Kirby. Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. The Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. Philly Joe and Kirby's Big Dumb Wheel. Okay, I realized the intro went a little early today. It was a little <laughs> bit of sausage finger, Philly button pusher. It's Thursday. We're getting close to a long weekend. It happens. My focus isn't quite where it needs to be. I apologize. <laughs> I hope our boss is listening. Right, he'll love oh, good. We only have two meetings already booked this morning. Why not a third? <laughs> good morning, Will. Good morning. How are you today? I'm doing very good, thanks. Nice. Lovely. You're uh, all ready to play the big dumb wheel, I take it? Yes, I am ready. Okay. Well, will he win or will he not? <laughs> Way to go, Kerb. Thank you. Way to go. <laughs> Way to go. Just like that. There's $100 up for grabs. That's all I can tell you, Will. Okay, that sounds good. And you understand how it works, right? you got to pick one of us. We've got a wheel. It's got our names on it. If it lands on the name you pick, you got got 100 bucks. That's right. I'm going to try a little strategy here. Ooh. I was, uh, can I ask whose name the, the wheel is on now? Like the oh. ticket? <laughs> okay, yeah. we've never had this before. Yeah, so this it's on Philly. Okay, then I'm going to go with Philly. Oh, nice. All right. That's Let's an interesting take on it. Full circle because Philly was the name yesterday that was picked, and it's still on Philly. So we had a $300 winner yesterday. I hope you're right, Will. Yeah. yeah. Let's yeah, go, Will. Well. Let's go, Will. Will and Phil. Right. Can we do it? The Will Phil connection. <laughs> Ooh, did you spin it the other way this time? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, okay. Like I went to. Uh, no. Okay. He went clockwise. All right. Let's go. Joe, Philly, Kirby, Joe, Philly, Kirby, Joe, Philly, oh, Kirby, come Joe, come Joe Philly. Come on. Yes! yes! <laughs> And it just wow. held on, Will. Just held on. Oh, right on. Mm-hmm. Like, what kind of magic was that? Yeah. That's for sure. What That's do you awesome. do for a living? Analytics? Like, you had that figured out, Will. <laughs> a greater operator. Yeah, greater operator. Makes ah. sense. It works. Yeah. Would you yeah. ever take uh, Kirby out for a spin in the greater? Absolutely. Yeah? Teach her how to drive? Sure. Drive it? Oh, yeah. It's she in a field, her. right? Like, you, it, it's like you're, you're grading uh, hay, right? What? No, no, uh, roads. Oh, boy. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. It's great. Uh, two days ago, she explained to me how the uh, street painter <laughs> machine works, so I'd love to know more about how a grader works. Uh, I thought yeah. it was a yeah. I'll tell you who's out in the field right now. <laughs> it's not Will. Farmer Kirby. Well, have a good day grading hay. That's funny. Do hay on the side. Why learn something new? A side hustle. Way to go. Okay, a grader is for the road, <laughs> not for the hay bales. You're thinking of a combine, okay. maybe? I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Hang on the line. we well, got to grab some well, more congr- details. Right Congrats this morning, Will. <laughs> Thank you. The Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. You got an imposter on social media, Joe? Yeah, yeah, I don't know what happened. About this is uh, some kind of story you got going here. And well, yeah. it can happen to anyone, except this is, I, I think I, uh, listen, I don't want to insult anybody because I don't know who I'm insulting, but this has to be the stupidest, <laughs> the most least intelligent fraudster you'll ever meet in your life. So, you know, on Instagram, you get uh, somebody that follows you, you get a notification, yeah. and it says, blank, blank, is now following you. Mm-hmm. And I look and I go, wow, this this picture looks familiar. <laughs> and I look and it's uh, a guy by the name of Joe Dixon, yeah. D-I-X-O-N. <laughs> and then I look, I go, Joe Dixon, hey, that's a pretty cool name. <laughs> then I look over at the picture and I go, hey, wait a second. That guy looks really familiar. It's a picture of me. <laughs> And my my dog Stewie, I'm holding my dog Stewie, and they've stolen this picture from my Instagram account, 
<laughs> and have used it as a profile picture. And then I sit there and I go, Joe Dixon. I go, this guy's not even using my name misspelt or something. So here's the best part. What do you do with that? I'm going, well, I got to I got to report this. Yeah. So I figure out, OK, here's the report page. And they give you like only a couple of minimal options at Instagram, right? <laughs> Billions of people served with them in Facebook. And this is the option. It's you want to report them for like slam, like, you know, some misstep of some sort or that they're impersonating you. And I'm going, well, kind of, kinda, but there's no kind of box. It's there's no box to write anything. You just have to bluntly say, uh. right? So now some guy that's getting paid big bucks in California is sitting there going, this guy says this guy's impersonating, but it's obvious his name's a yellow and this person is Dixon. How can he be impersonating him? Well, the picture. So anyway, that's what I'm going through so right now. So all you people, because people are going to think, oh, that's Aiello's real name. Must be Joe yeah. Dixon. All these years, we wonder if Aiello You've was his real name. You've always looked like a Dixon yeah. to me. Yeah, you do look a bit like a Dixon. <laughs> yeah. It's not Italian at all, but... Okay. Yeah. The, other, the other possibility is this, this guy is, a, is an actual person who just happens to be a big fan of you. Maybe the show. And, you, and <laughs> using my picture. And using, he's so, such a fan of you that he used your picture. I'll tell you. Uh, I've never met that person. Uh, um, so I, I've got family members that wouldn't use my own picture. <laughs> Just like that person, uh, Phil Fitzgerald, that uses your photo. Well, yeah, well known. <laughs> He's your biggest fan. He's my fan. You're a fan. So uh, don't accept friendship requests from Joe Dixon. It is not Joe Aiello, <laughs> even though the picture is Joe. He used a good picture, at least. I'll give him credit for that. For more Philly Joe and Kirby, lock it into 92.1 City weekday mornings, 6 to 10.